Alrighty, welcome back to Weenie Trades. In this video, I'm gonna be going over my November monthly trading log. So I'm gonna be going over my best trades of the month. I'm gonna be going over my worst trades of the month. I'm gonna be talking about what I did well, what I could do better, and what I've learned from the last month. So the reason I'm tracking is because what gets measured gets managed. And it was a pretty interesting month. Quite a few trades, lots of winners, lots of losers, lots of lessons. And um, just as an FYI, you guys know that I'm not the best trader in the world. I'm certainly not the worst though, but I can always be in, uh, looking to improve. I can always get better each and every day. Uh, as, as you guys uh, know, I'm a pretty good analyst. My major in college was business analytics. So I did a lot of work with stocks, analyzing trends back in college, managed my college's portfolio, and really just I'm a forecaster. So it's kind of like asking the weatherman to place bets each time he makes a prediction on the weather the next day. And I'm just trying to get better at placing my bets on what I think the weather will be tomorrow, the next day, the next week, the next month, whatever it may be. So let's get right into the video. Let's start off on a good note. Let's talk about our biggest winning trades. And when I say our, I really just mean me. I'm not telling you guys to take any of these trades. I, I, th these are all my trades. This is my personal record keeping. You know, I, I, I don't think every single trade is in here, but the majority noteworthy ones are in here. You can see each of my trades at Weenie Trades Live. So be sure to tune into that if you wanna see live trading, live execution, live crazy thought breakdowns, live excitement, live just stone cold, just rock hard analysis. So let's start off with our winners. The first winner that I really kind of want to talk about was the Tesla put debit spread. And that was on the November 9th. Right here is $72 into $365, 406%. And the reason I uh, want to talk about Tesla is because it was a pretty big, obvious topping formation. You know, I kept, kept saying, hey, Tesla, probably going to drop pretty nastily, regardless of the news, the chatter, Elon selling, whatever it may be. So right over here, Tesla made a nice new high of 12.43. We've gone pretty parabolic. Uh, during this point in time, Romulus was coming on live stream. We were just talking about Tesla. He was saying Tesla is still bullish though. And Tesla was still bullish. But eventually you just get so ridiculously extended without any pullbacks that you eventually start to break down. And what was kind of that hint? Well, there's a little bit of indecision up here. So there's a little bit of indecisiveness on Tesla up here, doji candle, indecisive, indecisive. What happens when you're indecisive after just a massive stupid run? I mean, are you gonna go on another massive stupid run? You could, and I'm not calling that run stupid. It was a pretty good run. Anyways, the, the, the odds favored a mean reversion pullback. And after that, Tesla dropped 17%. And what I did beforehand, and I don't even think it was this day, it was this day right here. We started to gap down, I was like, okay, that's a hint towards selling. Boom, buy that put debit spread when the IV was low. So we want to be buyers of options when implied volatility is low. And what I did, boom, $78. And what, what, was, the re, what was the return on that? Boy, Tesla, $72 into 365, 406%. We get the next day gap down and boom, selling on capitulation. And you can go watch that at Weenie Trades Live. I sold the put at the low, then bought Tesla shares and rode the Tesla shares up for a good 6%. Oh, it was a crazy day. It was really awesome. And so it's really helpful to have that trading knowledge of when to take profits, when to notice the capitulation, whatever it may be. So that was Tesla. That was an awesome winning trade. Next up we've got is Roblox. And Roblox was on the 16th. The call debit spread over here on Roblox. This was in the weekly game plan. I called out the low of the week for Roblox. And I said, I'm entering Roblox at 104. And here's the debit spread, 183 into 321. Not as cool, but it was just a solid trade. So let's check out Roblox Daily, RBLX. So Roblox Daily, that was over here. And over here on Roblox, boom, fat gap up from earnings. Nice, good move. Fat gap up, nice, good, healthy, controlled pullback. And hey, what happens when you get a nice, good, controlled pullback? Well, you can buy it. And boom, I bought Roblox at about 104. Boom, we get the nice, good breakout. I said you could target something like the 120, but this day it went up so much so fast. I took my profits off at 113. I took a nine point move and 
a great trade on Roblox. So, of course, I could have held a lot longer. So that's something that I can work on. I mean, if it's a swing trade and it's hitting your target pretty fast, ideally, I wish I would have sized up a little bit more then I could peel it. But really, I could, could only get the size that I could at that point. Oh, well. So what? I missed out on a little bit more. Somebody else's money. It was still an amazing trade. And a lot of members and subscribers were able to catch that beautiful cup and handle bull flag breakout. So now Roblox, you know, lower, high, higher, long. Yeah, do we go sideways, slightly lower? Time will tell in the future, but that was an awesome trade on Roblox. And uh, next up we've got is Myrna, M-R-N-A. And it was a put debit spread on the fifth. Do you guys remember I was saying, hey, I'm going to short Moderna, shorting Moderna. And if we just go over here, here we go. M-R-N-A, where is it? Put debit. $43 into $356. So you can see the ticker type, the cost of the trade, the exit, how much I made or lost on it, the percent gain or loss, the setup, the notes. We're going to talk a little bit more later about what things I might change about the spreadsheet so I can get a little bit better tracking. Right over here, Myrna, $43 into $356, 727% gain. So let's look at the chart over here on Moderna. How did I get a 700% gain? Well, it was just a daily bear flag, just a daily bear flag. So right over here, we get a drop and look at this. We get a bear flag and what happens after a bear flag? Well, I can go and grab this and I can duplicate this and I can extend it to the breakdown area. And I was looking at that. I was like, wow, that's a pretty big drop. A long time of consolidation. Whenever you consolidate for that long of time, yeah, the drop can be pretty decent. And boom, shorted Moderna right there. Boom, fat gap down. Oh, just wonderful, just wonderful. Boom, a quick TP. And not only that, there's some other trades that I took on Moderna. I was saying this day, this day on the earnings report, 212 is my dip buy. The low of that day was 210.84. 210.84. I was buying the dip on Moderna at 212. People were calling me crazy. They're like, Moderna's done. Moderna going to 70. Moderna to, Moderna to drop. I'm like, be careful getting bearish near the lows. You don't want to be getting bearish near the lows. We want to be getting bullish for at least a potential retracement. Now, I took this trade on, on Moderna 212, and boom, this is a nice good swing trade. I took the majority of my profits in the 260s. I thought that was a great move, a 50-point move, and this is with through options and credit spreads. We can uh, go. We can quickly. Um, you, we can review any of the spreadsheet if you want to see where those are. Those took place a little bit later, but nonetheless, took it, taking profits maybe a little bit early, as you can see, Moderna from that 212 made a 72% move. So round trip trades really can be awesome. They make a lot of my profits for the month if you can short and then go long. But it takes a little bit of skill and a little bit of timing. For example, the SPY during the COVID crash uh, last year, I, I knew to go short because I had seen this type of drop before. Boom, go short at the top. So selling the highs, buying the lows. I mean, we talked about this also on stream, how we had gapped up. It was a shock gap. It was capitulation. It was high volume. We were extended to the downside. We we're due for at least a kickback rally. And so, boom, shorting the top and then buying the bottom. A few round trip trades can really make so, uh, multiple months of profits if done correctly. And it kind of needs that space. You don't always want to be doing round trip trades on all stocks. But it was really awesome to do trades like that. And Moderna was definitely one of them. Tesla's one of them. So those round trip trades really start to pay. So those are some of the biggest winners of the month. You can go see, you can see other other little winners. You know, we, we can talk briefly about MANA, MANA USD. Um, you know, we, 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 we called out that trade setup at 2.87. MANA went up to six. So doubled doubled after, after that dip buy. And there's, there's, there's the equity right there. 75% on that trade. Oh, amazing. So lots of great, great trades. But let's talk about my biggest losers because... It's always great to learn from our wins, have fun, whatever it may be, but it's also really important to learn from our losers. So my first biggest loser I wanna talk about, obviously, is Google. It's at the beginning of the spreadsheet. It was at the beginning of the month. You can see that uh, thumbnail that I did where death was knocking through on all the doors. It, it knocked, killed Google, then it killed Weenie. Then it, I, I, it was knocking on the door of Tesla and that very next day, Tesla proceeded to drop 14, 15%. So 
That day, Google, I bought a call option. That's very risky. That's leveraging almost 100 shares of Google, which if you don't know, Google's a nearly $3,000 stock. And when you're leveraging 100 shares of that, you're leveraging about $300,000. Do I have $300,000? No. I hope to one day, and I'm, I'm sure I'll get there. Just got to stay disciplined, grind, learn from my mistakes, whatever it may be. But this is at the be this is this day. This is the first of the month, and Google had just become came off a very positive report, very positive report, higher lows, higher highs, great daily chart. We had a bull flag, and I started to grab the dip on Google at about 2,900, and I said my stop loss is going to be if we start to really break down, and oh, boom, stop loss hit. It was the low of the day. Had I just held that contract for three or four or five more days, trade would have made over $6,000. 6K because, you know, the Google went up over $100 since that point. It was the right idea. Just my risk parameters within that did not fit. And of course, getting a little bit of slippage. If you guys recall one of the earlier videos, I took a Google YOLO trade, but it was a planned trade where I was planning to risk about $4,000, that was the risk. And I was looking to make 15 to $16,000. I know, right? Crazy. That's a huge uh, weenie trade. That's a, a mini YOLO for me. And I, boom, we, we start to pull back. I start to accumulate on that hammer. I accumulate again on that hammer. Boom, we close at the high of the day right here. I accumulate again. Next day, gap down. And at that point, I'm up 2K. The next day, I'm down 2K. Uh, and I had to cut the loss at minus 4K. And had I just held for another week or two, just needed to diamond hands with the high conviction trade, you know, that trade would have made $60,000. $60,000, yes, that is correct. Because the implied volatility was low. So tough parameters within that. And it just reminded me of that, of that type of scenario where it's like, oh, it just got me. Next time, I wonder if I should just stick through and risk the entire premium instead of placing a stop loss on the contract and just monitor it, I'll have to reevaluate that at Weenie Trades Live. So Google is the first biggest loser of the month. And I also wanted to uh, quickly talk about Netflix. This happened at the end of the month. So I had a really good meat, meat, meaty month in the middle, really good month in the middle, but over here on uh, Netflix, and this is uh, when the overall market got absolutely just shafted earlier. And it doesn't look too bad on the hourly, Barely looks bad on the daily after today. Netflix is uh, definitely weaker, but in my, looking back upon it, this was not a good trade. Anyways, Netflix, higher highs, higher lows. I saw that we were making higher lows and I stepped in to buy Netflix with pretty heavy size at about 659. And Netflix, you know, buying at that, looking at the daily, looking how we did a reversal candle. I should not have been buying. So that's something I can work on. Remind myself of the daily structure of the candle. And I probably could have saved myself, oh, I don't know, 500 bucks, 550 bucks. Netflix, I really sized into. I was getting aggressive. What I usually like to do when I'm trading, and this worked really well in 2019 and 2020, is trade medium size, trade small size, build the cushion, build the cushion, build the cushion. Because I can trade very, very well with medium to small size. There's not as many emotions involved when it's less size. So you trade more logically, you're more alert, you're, you're thinking clearly. And what I like to do is trade small and medium, trade, 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 and build up that cushion. And then what I like to do is I like to find a really, really good setup, really, really good setup. And I like to risk a lot on it to quite a bit more and try to find that high probability trade and get paid. It worked very well in 2019 very well in 2020 in multiple points. But in 2021, as, as per the Google example, as per this Netflix example, I just was off. It just hit the stop loss. And you know, it's, it's, it's pretty um, demasculating, if you will, to just really size in, be like, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna make a lot of money. And then the market just boom, hits the stop. It's even worse sometimes when it hits the stop and then rips and goes in your direction. That happened quite a lot on a lot of medium sized trades this month as well. Everything with the blue or teal highlight was something where I was just low wicked. Whereas literally within five cents, that's why I consider a low wick, five to 10 cents, boom, low wick, and then it goes in the direction. So the analysis is there. My risk parameters within that need to be adjusted. 
it needs to be adjusted if I am going to perform better and make a better living. So for example, total P&L for November, it's roughly this number, 1,400. I'd say like an average month is maybe like 1,500 to 2,000. So a little bit less than the average month. And you can see that I have these opportunities to really make good money, but managing your stops within the market is a whole new thing of itself. It's a whole new uh, style. It's a whole new skill that I'm still working on developing. So that's why what I mean when I say I'm not the best trader in the world. You can see what the worst day of the month. And that was actually the last day of the month. The last two days of the month gave back three quarters of the P&L. So I was sitting on a pretty good month and you can just see loss after loss. The entire market had gapped down. Ah, you know, definitely sucks. I don't really have too many excuses besides diversify, maybe a little bit over leverage. I normally catch these down moves, but I was in quite a few swings and it gave back quite a bit of the P&L. It's just reality. It's a part of it. And if you appreciate the, the, this vulnerability, this talk on how I'm explaining my thought processes and trades, hit the like button. If you like our, these style of videos, whatever it may be, it was a pretty interesting month of November for sure. And real quick, I wanted to talk about another bad daily chart, or at least a potentially bad daily chart. And that was on Roku. Roku was gapping up on good news. And look look at Roku, the daily chart, down almost fi over 58% from its highs right here. At that point in time, down 54%. And I said, hey, I like Roku today. I like Roku. I think we can break out over this level. And um, Roku ah, just failed. So the daily chart was just too weak. And what I should have done is realize that, hey, this is a daily bear flag. Why would I expect a big bounce? The buyers haven't proven themselves before. Why would they prove themselves now? So that's something that I can definitely improve upon. So that what, what I did well uh, overall in the, month of, in the month of November is I did very well on my capital efficiency. So did very well catching these put debit spreads. You know, you can see a Fubo put $10 into $50. You know, you can, you can see some, some NVIDIA trades prior to earnings. I did say that, hey, this trade was luck, not skill, but still 350%, $81 into 366. Not a bad gig if you ask me. So it, very capital efficient. Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm always managing my risk. I always take my stop no matter what. You know, on that Netflix trade, I saved myself $3,000 by stopping out early. Uh, of course, on Google, it cost me to stop out. But just because I don't want to stop out doesn't mean that I have the right to not manage my risk. It takes a lot of discipline to build up, to stop out every single time. And that's why a lot of people, if you don't take your stop all uh, every single time, a lot of people might have not taken stops in the market. You hear margin calls, you hear liquidations, you hear pe uh, people chasing back the market, whatever it may be. And it's because they didn't practice that discipline of constantly stopping out each and every time. And so that's something that I really pride myself on. I, I may not be the flashiest or coolest trader, but I protect my capital. I at least know how much I'm gonna lose, uh, or at least relatively, given you know slippage, whatever it may be. And you know, of course, there's 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 other things about it. There's there's random uh, mishaps. You know, 3M Robinhood um, uh, signed me on one of my uh, short strikes, and I lost more than 100. percent You know, I, uh, minus 220 percent, which is not really um, uh, heard of. Yeah, 3M call credit. Yeah, Robin had sold me early. Remember this exercise of short, but not the long way. Trade the trade would have paid too. So I was uh, you know trying to collect. You know, uh, it was about 150 dollars, and I ended up losing 300 because of the way Robin had did things. Anyways, having a lot of trouble with brokers liquidating my orders when nothing really happened in the market, and they give some bullcrap excuses. So. De definitely um, some things to work out on the other side of things, but I don't want to blame something else for my performance. That removes the responsibility from me. So definitely would like to uh, get better. And on other things that I can work on now is I, I, I do have sometimes a little bit of fear in my trades. And what does that look like? Well, basically it means like, well, I, I'm, I'm, when I'm in a trade, I'm, I'm, uh, sometimes I'm a little bit jittery. I'm a little bit emotional and fearful. And I'm looking to get out and pull out before the trade has actually matured. And that's an error. It may be taking a, to make, putting up a stop too tight. It may be taking profits too tight. So I need to remove that emotion. I've definitely had a little bit more emotions the past few months 
that you, than I've used to have. And that's because trading has, I've, I've needed to rely on trading as an income through a weenie trade. So that's just something that I could definitely do better on is just be a little bit less emotional. Don't let the fear, you know, get to me. So something to definitely work on. And I definitely want to adjust the spreadsheet. I want to add some columns that say intended gain and intended loss. And of course, enjoy the November, the, the beard, the beard's um, probably going to be going. It's um, definitely interesting. Get a haircut, get my beard shaved, start up all fresh. And if you enjoyed the way I structure my spreadsheet, this isn't the best way. There's other spreadsheets I should definitely check out online. Or if you have any spreadsheet, spreadsheet recommendations, be sure to send them forward towards me. I'd be happy to check them out. And, oh, and if you want my spreadsheet, you want to see my P&L, my, my spreadsheets from the past, from when I, since I started trading, be sure to join the course. Get, go ahead and get the weenie bundle. It really helps support the channel. People have a lot of great things to say about it. Free 30 day money back guarantee. People don't do the 30 day get back money back because they keep making money when they buy the course. So I, I don't guarantee results. I don't guarantee money but you're probably statistically likely to make a little bit more money and learn a few things, beginner to intermediate to advanced, if you check out the course. So that's all I have for today, uh, celebrating the Arm Day shirt. I sadly was not able to meet my most inspirational role model, BBC, Big Brandon Carter, and I'm wearing his Arm Day shirt in honor of him. Hopefully one day I can get him on the stream. We can talk about fitness, we can talk about stocks, we can talk about girls, we can talk about fights, we can talk about business, discipline, and all that fun stuff that makes our lives better. So that's all I have for today. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Thanks for tuning in. See ya. And Parker says, I'm gonna destroy some calls. And Peter says, I'm gonna destroy some puts. Thanks for tuning in. See ya.